Reminer Turbo Prep substantially reduces the time spent on data extraction, transformation, and loading. It also seamlessly integrates with RapidMiner's auto model, as we'll show you in this video. If you're used to working in RapidMiner Studio Design View, you can start Turbo Prep by selecting it in the Views menu. As you can see here, all options like Transform, Cleanse, Generate, or Model and Process are grayed out and inactive. So the first thing to do is to load some data. We can do that by either clicking on the text or the Load Data button. We can now choose to start with one of our recently used data sets. We could import new data, or we can access data from other built-in options, like through the RapidMiner repository, which is comparable to a local data folder. From the repository, you also have the option to retrieve data from a RapidMiner server repository or from a database to which you may have previously established a connection. It is noteworthy that if you select Import Data, you have the option to import data from your, from your local computer, a connected network drive, or you could retrieve it directly from a database, given that you have the relevant connection details at hand. For this short introduction, we want to load some sample data, so I'll choose the Samples folder here. To open the data, we could double-click or simply select and then click the Load Data button. We're now returning to the Turbo Prep Start screen, and now all the available options are active. On the left-hand side, you'll see five groups of actions, summarizing all kinds of data preparation steps you could imagine. You can start any of these steps now, then jump to another or repeat a similar step within the same group. You can also do multiple steps while you're in one of the data preparation sessions. Let's do a simple example like renaming a column to show this in more detail. Renaming is a transformation. My sample data shows information on each passenger on the Titanic's famous maiden voyage. To transform a column, you need to select it and then choose the transformation. I'll change the name of the column's sex to gender, and as I hit apply, you can see how the preview is updated. We could now continue to do more transformations, but we'll end this first preparation session by clicking Commit Transformation. Now let's try something a bit more challenging like adding a column. To do that, I'm choosing the Generate group because I'm generating a new column. Now to calculate the size of the family of each given passenger, we could simply add the number of siblings and the number of parents plus one, which is the passenger, her, or himself. All of this works nicely with drag and drop, and as I click Update Preview, I can now see this new column, or as we call it, this new attribute, appear. Having done this fast and very intuitive preparation step, we can now also nicely demonstrate the other available options of this view. By selecting History, you can now see what has been done and committed so far, and if needed, you could decide to roll back. Alternatively, you could branch off another preparation process by copying the data after any committed session. Turbo Prep is not a black box, but instead you can select to open the process, which has been generated for you in the background while using the point-and-click interface. Simply select Process. If you want to review what has been done so far, you can go through each operator in the process panel. If you want to change the calculation, just select the Generate Attributes operator and edit the calculation. But keep in mind that this change is not going to propagate back into Turbo Prep, but only takes effect if you run the process displayed here in the Design view. Now we can go back to our Turbo Prep. Instead of continuing with our menu items, let's look briefly at the table view. You can see gray bars, which are histograms at the top of each attribute, indicating the distribution characteristics of the data. For the gender, there are two bars indicating male and female. For age, you can see a more detailed distribution. Underneath each histogram, there are colors displayed, which are indicators of the quality. To learn more on the column age, I'll right-click, which gives us a handy context menu. From here, I could decide to jump right into a session of transformations or cleansing. Alternatively, I could sort my data according to this column, but keep in mind that the sorting will only be applicable to the current view, not to our actual data table. For that, you need to select Transformations, then Sort. As you can see, this opens a transformation session for us right there as a shortcut. You can also apply any change and see how it affects your data. If you don't want to commit the change, you can simply discard them with Cancel, as we're doing here. Now let's look at Show Details. In the column details for age, you can see the format, which is numeric, a bigger display of the previously indicated histogram, some key statistics, and of course you can also find some information on the quality. As you can see, there are five quality indications which RapidMiner Studio provides to you to easily access the quality of any data type. The rows are categorized in red if they are missing or infinity, in light blue for ID-ness, in gray for stability, and the remaining values are marked green. You can find more details on the different terms here.
If you want to explore your data further, then you can select to open Charts here. Instead of saving this state of our data set now to our repository, we'll use it right away to try and see if we can use it to build a good model to predict the survival of the Titanic passengers. We'll just use a temporary snapshot of the data, and then we walk through the familiar auto model dialog steps. I'll uncheck the calculation intense ensemble methods here, as we just want to see the mechanics. As we take a look at the easy to read decision tree model, we can see that our added column is a useful criteria or feature for the model to create a decision path. By the way, what we just did with creating this extra column is also referred to as feature generation. If you combine this with selecting the optimal set of input columns, also known as feature selection, then you're even doing feature engineering. With this hidden bonus lesson on data science, I will now end this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.